ये दस दस लोग हैं ना फाइव सिक्स मिनट्स और क्या है ना अगर हम टाइम ज़्यादा हो गया तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है ठीक है और कोई सेड्यूल है नहीं ना नेक्स्ट इसीलिए अब मतलब एब्रेप्टली कट तो नहीं जाएगा ना 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 हाँ ठीक है Yes, we have Nimesh Nikhil from Nepal. Uh, he had just joined us. Who, oh, sir? Nimesh Nikhil from Nepal. Okay, let him join. He had just joined. Yes. Oh, okay. Friends. Welcome to this last session of South Asian Online Literary Conference, being organized by the Sahitya Academy in collaboration with Foundation of Sark Writers and Literature. We have a total of ten participants who will be presenting their poems in this last and concluding session. Professor Keshab Sigdel from Nepal will be chairing this session, and other participants are. Miss Meena Guha, देख चुका हूँ ना, मैं पर इस टाइप वीडियो बनाऊँ। Miss Meena Guha from Bangladesh, Mr. Balbir Madhopuri from India, Miss Sabita Gautam Dahal from Nepal, Mr. Gopal Ashk from Nepal, Miss Shafinur Shafin from Bangladesh, Mr. Nimesh Nikhil from Nepal, Miss Sujana Raman Perugu from India. Miss Ranjana Nirola from Nepal and Miss Minu Minocha from India. So let us start the program, and I will I will request that each participant may take around five, six, or maybe six, seven minutes. And I also request all of you to introduce yourself before you make your presentation. Uh, first of all, I invite. uh miss uh, minu minocha ji minu ji please present your poems please unmute yourself i was expecting to be called the last that is why i was sitting around <laughs> no since other persons are joining so we can start okay fine so a uh, very good evening dear friends and uh, fellow participants and heartfelt thanks to this wonderful platform of uh, to sahitya academy to ma'am ajit kaur uh, for this fabulous opportunity of presenting my poems over here and i thank you dear chairperson and uh, coordinator for your very efficient coordination i've been watching your programs all through over the past 3 4 days so we thank all you. have been uh, yeah thank you we all have been through a tough year the last year was pretty tough for all of us and uh, which gave us ample time to sit with ourselves and uh, today i would like to share a few of my thoughts which emerged from encounters with myself what thoughts came up to me so i am presenting them in three poems uh, which will showcase a range of thoughts about the vulnerability of life and the first i call the flow of life so i'll start now life is not a shallow stream to be blithely traversed it's a journey over vastness from a nascent bubbling to a turbulent frothing a tumbling over obstructing rocks and stones jumping over cliffs dancing in eddying whirlpools onwards and onwards spending itself in weary toils the life force gently and slowly ebbing coming into a serenity to flow into the depths of the eternal being fathoms deep in an ocean of love o death thy name conjures macabre images of fray fearsome awesome enough to kill one before the judgment day o death Notorious art thou, 
shrouded in mystery, ensconced in mystical shadows. Thou camouflage thyself covertly from probing eyes, observing, silently vigilant to embrace an exhausted soul, flitting it away to a bar of celestial solace. There, the soul dot rests, far, oh, far from earthly ties, no morn, nor noon, or even tide. There it stays till the dawn of a new rise, flowing gently back to pick up threads of pending learnings divine. And yet, thou art feared. Thank you. Nice. My, next, my next poem delineates... Yeah. My next poem delineates a line of action for myself. For everything starts from within us, so I need to keep a check on myself, on my mind. I call it crusade. Scary to know that the strife around me is sourced from a war within. Is it so ugly in there? Am I capable of thinking such thoughts? When just the thought shakes me, what must it be doing to my body, to my mind, to my soul? For I can see the physical evidence around me. Is it so inside? No, I don't want to hurt myself so. No, I have to take care of myself. No, I must change my thought process. Wonder if it will reflect outside as well? Of course. If my war creates strife outside, my peace will manifest tranquility. Spoilers alert. Here I come to annihilate your disdainful squabbles. Here I go on a personal crusade for harmony. Nothing can stop the world from getting better now. Thank you. My final poem is a call to our, mag is, uh, our magnificent ancient Hindu culture, which once bound us all together in one extensive subcontinent. We were all together, but which unfortunately got fragmented over the ages. So I would like to now give a call for a renaissance and so revive our country's lost glory. I call this poem renaissance. Obliterating footsteps across the sands of time. A nation did lose its glory. Falling prey to the hands of vandals that did destroy its ancient annals. Write they could not their own history and bear they could not another's dignity. Pilfering, they continued to rape a land. Desecrating glorious tales of yore. Lost were thus proud tales of valor, of courageous sons of our land. Denigrating a whole culture, they brainwashed an entire generation by far. So we grew up bereft of our real history, believing we deserved not the best. Servile we were and had to remain so, for we knew not how to rule the world. A renaissance did set in, dim flashes did pour forth, illuminating dark pages that told a different lore. A Rana rose and so did a Peshwa, isolated islands of honor, who strove to restore a nation buried under ignorance. A clarion call did sound, reverberating through the country. Rise, O sleeping people, before the mantle of oblivion dot wipe you out completely. The call did touch somnolent hearts, piercing age-old vineyards, rousing dormant psyches that suddenly found their bearing, opening sleepy eyes they looked around at their shackled country. A cry did arise from deep inside at their own stupidity. A chain did form to touch each heart 
and washed away the settled dust. It's not too late, my countrymen. A war cry did sound. Each of us can the glory restore by finding our own voice. It's not too late, my countrymen, to rewrite our history. A history that equals none. A history that created the fabric of this world and has the power to tar again. Today, we are awakening, rising to retrieve a lost heritage, right from Panini to Aryabhata to a divine Aurobindo. For beyond the veil, each agonizes at a vanished majesty. Listen to the soul of your country. Revere her with reverence. This land of God's own spirituality, listen to her cry of help. For she has made you her life, her eyes, her heart, her soul. And on you she depends to find her lost glory. All she needs is you and me and an invincible flame of belief. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinayaji. It was a very nice presentation. And now I invite uh, Ms. Shafinur Shafin from Bangladesh. Madam, please come up with your presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sir, um, South Asian Literary uh, Writers uh, Foundation and also the Minister of Culture, Government of India. Uh, really, I'm really thankful that you people invited me to recite my poem over here. So, uh, as uh, I'm a poet and also I'm a writer and translator, uh, and beside writing, I try, I'm a, a lecturer in um, private university. And my first book was published in 2019. Uh, sorry, 2016, and second one was a translated book. It was published in 2019. And I also, I'm a poetry editor in an online literary magazine, Pracha Review, which is called. So let's, I know, I mean, let's not go for detail. I would like to start my poem right now. So the first poem, the name of the poem is Afternoon. Afternoon brings you yellow light in massy hair to comb after a nap on tired faces of fathers on their way home from Asar prayer to a cup of black tea that awaits them on the table and on the primitive noise of childhood resonating somewhere. Afternoon brings news of someone's death, whom you didn't remember for years, whose death was once what you wished for. Afternoon reminds mothers of a thing called sadness. They sip tea and look blank while kids play on and on. The next poem is trauma. No new mask to wear when I stand against the mirror. Only the pain of lost memories touches my chin. There only remain some scattered stains of blood our voice resonates the distance between two continents, and we can't whistle away our listlessness. And yet, love is a sleepless snake that lies awake within the sleep of my sleep. Conjugal. Their laughter with their coarse touches end up often with their daily fights. Every night, their blood and sweat lie on bed like two friendly foes. Ballad of a garment worker. Morning sun is still sleepy. She steps out of home with her silent feet. Her hair smells of coconut oil, spreads around the noses on the bus. And a bus full with either lust or pity in eyes. Headlines in the hands say, RMG's contribution highest in economic growth. Pages are turned over. 
ignoring all those unwanted touches, comments, stalking, the rent of house and utility bills, hungry waiting family members' needs. She prays with no wish. She knows everyone's prayer is not accepted. Mm -hmm. Keeping the tensions of almost no salary, she stands before the sewing machine. Threads around her sweaty fingers wave someone's dream dress. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Shafi Nurji. Uh, now I wish to invite uh, Ms. Sabita Gautam from Nepal. Sabita ji, unmute yourself first of all. Yes, I did. And, and uh, before you present your poems, please give your small introduction. Yes, I am Sabita Gautam Dahal from uh, Nepal. Basically, I am in the eastern part of Nepal, Biratnagar. And I am a senior lecturer of chemistry. And I like poetry. And I have three collections of uh, poetry, poetry collections. And uh, today I'm very happy uh, to recite my poem uh, in front of you all, uh, South Asian stars. And uh, one poem I'll recite in English that I have written originally in English. And then one I'll recite in original Nepali and its translation. So altogether, um, two poems I'll recite over here. You may, take around, you, you may take around seven, eight minutes, maybe three poems or four. You can present. Yes, uh, uh, two poems. Uh, one poem's translation I'll recite and one poem originally in English. So okay. basically two poems, but three poems we can suppose. Right. Uh, and the for, uh, title of my poem is How Are You? How Are You? Poem goes, There is nothing new to share. I am in deep business of care. My world is same since long, silent, uncertain, and transient. All prayers and thinking are focused on Almighty. Still, I am not sure he exists or not. I read along that God is dead. There is nothing new, exciting. I am away from my hometown. No idea when the day will come. I could go to my bed and could have morning tea in the same cup. Still, I am not sure happiness will come back or not. It has lost. There is nothing new to bear. I have been through all the optimum of neglect, deny, and disrespect within family, within country. Still, I am not sure my chain wound will heal someday or not. It has infected. There is nothing new negotiation, no regular ride or pride. My glow, my charm are bedridden. My blood, my sweat, my secretions are different. Still, I'm not sure I could get my normal routine back or not. I'm injected. There is nothing new declare. There is nothing new to declare. I am on the halfway, half filled and incomplete, yet a lot to cover up. So many things started and are in the middle. Plants are planted, no one there to water up. Still, I'm not sure they will reach to the destination or not. I am immovable. I am okay. I am fine. Thank you. I am good. All are just formalities. In fact, I am nowhere. I could listen. I could see. I could feel, but I don't know how could I answer you exactly. How could I answer you exactly? This is my first poem. How are you? And now I am going to recite uh, one of my uh, poem in Nepali, original Nepali, then I'll read translation by Professor Abhisubedi. And then uh, next poem is Tasvir Rajivan. First I'll recite original Nepali. Tasvir Rajivan. Na niskan cha phrem bahira, na baat maar cha, na jiskan cha, apratim istirata hudo rahe cha tasvir ko. Yugal pal tehi istir bhai ka chan, jasta ka tastai, jaha ka tahi, ti magna chan, sundarta ko nirantarta ma, maya ko mandap ma, chiranjimi bhai ka chan, mrityu ko gahira dukha ti buzdai nan. Kids ko kalatma kalas sanga daji rahe chu, tasvir ko saumyata, bhari lo anuhar, nidhar ko rato acheta, saralata, swacheta. Tasvir ko taza pan, ke kaam panita hoi na, तिनले पाएका छन् अमर नाम मनमुटुहरुको सम्मान 
यी स्टिल अचल तस्वीर समय का संवाहक रहे कोपिला का अभिभावक भई बस का आत्मलीन धावक झ रहे अमूर्त छन ये पिकासो को चित्रकारिता रिम्रो तस्वीर दुवै स्थिर छोक बस अनंत गहिराई का तह तह जति जी डुब्न सक पौड़ी रहन सक इसंग अपराजित द्वंद्व संयोग रहे तस्वीर रीवन बीच न गर न हलुको न खल्लो न मीठो न पातलो न मोटो न लामो न छोटो ये तो अकाट्य आकस्मिकता रहे जीवन रिता बीच अपत्यारिलो समानता रहे तस्वीर रीवन बीच तस्वीर बाहर निस्क जीवन बाची रहे अद्भुत सन्तुलन एटा अद्भुत सन्तुलन एटा कालजयी कंपन Now I'll recite its translation, uh, and I would like to thank Professor Avi Subedi uh, for the translation. And poem goes like this: Picture and life. Neither does it jump the frame, nor talk or jest. What a unique repose of the picture! Dual moments are fixed in the self same shape, in the self same place, content within the continuity of beauty in the arbor of love. the picture has become immortal it can't fathom the depth of death sorrow i am comparing the suavity of the picture the lively visage red rice tikka on forehead the simplicity and fairness all with kids christian arm why only talk about the freshness of the picture as it has made an immortal name and received the respect of minds and hearts the fixed immobile picture they are the bearers of the torch of time like the committed runners who walk as guardians of the world they are not abstract works picasso's painting and your picture both are still and stable they are there carrying the endless layers of depth where one can dive and swim as per will There is a persistent dialectical relation between picture and life neither heavy nor light neither bland nor delicious neither thin nor fat neither long nor short the unavoidable suddenness of relations between life and stability it seems there is unbelievable commonness between picture and life jumping frame life continues being with a unique balance a tremor that defies time thank you thank you everyone thank you very much savita ji it was a nice presentation and uh, i am happy that mr balbir madhopuri ji has uh, joined us sir unmute yourself first okay namaskar balbir ji oh thank you so much nice uh, to see you uh, we are happy that you could join so i uh, straight away invite you and uh, i will also request you to uh, give your introduction before you present your poems i love you okay. ha ah, ji thank you ha ah, ji yes speaking ha ah, ji mere bare bolo main dekh rahe ha ji tonu apne bare bolo acha introduction introduction i uh, myself uh, balbir madhopuri and uh, i authored uh, 14 books in my mother tongue punjabi and uh, translated uh, world class uh, literature uh, 38 books and uh, edited uh, uh, 46 books in my uh, mother tongue punjabi and uh, uh, out of uh, my original books uh, three are uh, poetry books and uh, one my autobiography you know uh, that is uh, uh, appreciated uh, in uh, the india and abroad also and uh, it has been translated in so many languages including uh, in uh, english by the oxford university press now it is being uh, translated in russian and uh, polish languages and uh, uh, my new novel mitti bol pai is uh, also in the charcha uh, you know well and uh, uh, these are i retired as a deputy director from the ministry of information and broadcasting 
now i am working as a director in the punjabi bhavan new delhi so it was uh, my brief intro and uh, i would recite my two three poems as you like i will start the first in punjabi then uh, i will uh, recite in hindi one okay okay thank you so much uh, first of all in punjabi welcome mera buzurg ਪਾਣੀ ਤੇ ਪਈ ਲੀਕ ਨੂੰ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਪੱਥਰ ਤੇ ਲਕੀਰ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰਾ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਬੇਗਾਨੇ ਫੁੱਲ ਪੌਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਾਣੀ ਪਾਉਂਦਾ ਉਹ ਆਪ ਹੀ ਖਿੜ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਬੇਗਾਨੇ ਫੁੱਲ ਪੌਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਾਣੀ ਪਾਉਂਦਾ ਉਹ ਆਪ ਹੀ ਖਿੜ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਲਵੇਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਪਿੰਡਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਥਾਪੀ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਦੁੱਧ ਪੁੱਤ ਦੀ ਖੈਰ ਮੰਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਹਾਲ ਦੀ ਜੰਗੀ ਉੱਤੇ ਹੱਥ ਰੱਖਦਿਆਂ ਸਰਬੱਤ ਦਾ ਭਲਾ ਲੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਨਾਲ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਹੱਥੀਂ ਲਿਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਹਰਾ ਚਿੱਟਾ ਤੇ ਨੀਲਾ ਇਨਕਲਾਬ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਵਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਖੁਸ਼ਕ ਦਰਿਆ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਹੱਥੀਂ ਲਿਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਹਰਾ ਚਿੱਟਾ ਤੇ ਨੀਲਾ ਇਨਕਲਾਬ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਵਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਖੁਸ਼ਕ ਦਰਿਆ ਜੇਠ ਹਾੜ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੂਸ ਦੇ ਲਿਸੇ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਤੇ ਉਧਰ ਅੰਦਰੀ ਲਿਸ਼ਕਾ ਮਾਰਦੇ ਤਿਲਕਵੇਂ ਤਨ ਜਿਸਮਾਂ ਚੋਂ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਭਾਲਦੇ ਮਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਜੱਦੀ ਪੁਸ਼ਤੀ ਸੋਚ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਵਾਰ-ਵਾਰ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਮੁਖਾਤਬ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਮਹਿਜ ਨਸੀਬਾਂ ਦਾ ਖੇਲ ਹੈ ਕਦੇ-ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਸੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਦੇ ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਸੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਚਾਹੇ ਸਮੁੰਦਰ ਚ ਘੜਿਆਲ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਮੱਛੀਆਂ ਖੂਬ ਤੈਰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਪਰਿੰਦਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਡਣ ਲਈ ਆਕਾਸ਼ ਰਹਿਣ ਲਈ ਘਰ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਗੌਰਵਮਈ ਸੰਸਕ੍ਰਿਤੀ ਦਾ ਦੇਸ਼ ਗੁਲਾਮੀ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਥਾ ਨੂੰ ਤੋੜਨ ਲਈ ਮੇਰੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਸੰਤਾਨ ਕਦੇ ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਸੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤਲਾਸ਼ਦਾ ਹੈ ਦੇਰ ਹੈ ਨੇਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇ ਅਰਥ ਕਦੇ ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਸੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤਲਾਸ਼ਦਾ ਹੈ ਦੇਰ ਹੈ ਨੇਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇ ਅਰਥ ਅਟਣ ਭਰੇ ਹੱਥਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਲੱਭਣ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਿੱਟ ਦੀਆਂ ਲੋਪ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਜਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਲਕੀਰਾਂ ਪਾਣੀ ਤੇ ਪਈ ਲੀਕ ਨੂੰ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਪੱਥਰ ਤੇ ਲਕੀਰ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰਾ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਚਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਤੁਰਿਆ ਹਾਂ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਚਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਤੁਰਿਆ ਹਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਮੇਰੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਤੁਰੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਮੂੰਹ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਪੈਰ ਨੇ ਪੈਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਧਰਮ ਤੁਰਨਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਚਿਰ ਹਾਂ ਚ ਹਾਂ ਮਿਲਾਈ ਹੁਣ ਮੇਰੇ ਬੋਲ ਪਗਾਓ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਜ਼ਬਾਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਕੰਨ ਨੇ ਕੰਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਧਰਮ ਸੁਣਨਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਬੇਘਰਾ ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਆਦਿ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਘਰ ਜੰਗਲ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਜੰਗਲ ਦੀ ਹਵਾ ਫਲਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਹਵਾ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਜਾਣਾ ਪਾਪ ਹੈ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਖੋਪੇ ਬੱਦਾ ਬਰਦ ਹਾਂ ਥੱਕੇ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਹ ਦਵਾਓ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਖੋਲੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਤੇਰਾ ਧਰਮ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਕੇ ਅੰਡਿਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਹਵਾ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਤੁਰਾਂਗਾ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਹਵਾ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਤੁਰਾਂਗਾ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਬੋਲ ਗੁੰਬ ਦੀ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਬਣੇਗੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਹਵਾ ਨੂੰ ਥਮਣਾ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਕੰਦ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੁਣ ਅਤਿ ਅਸੰਭਵ ਹੈ ਉਸਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਚਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਤੁਰਿਆ ਹਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਮੇਰੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਤੁਰੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਮੂੰਹ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਪੈਰ ਨੇ ਪੈਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਧਰਮ ਤੁਰਨਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ 
ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਹਿੰਦੀ ਚ ਸੁਣਾਉਂਗਾ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਮੈਂ ਤੇਰੇ ਸੰਗ ਇਉਂ ਜੀਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਪੜ ਦਿੰਨਾ ਜੀ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਆ ਛੋਟੀ ਜਿਹੀ ਪੜ ਕੇ ਉਹ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਪੜ ਦਿੰਨਾ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਆ ਉਹ ਤੋਂ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਚ ਕੋਈ ਨਾਓ ਇਨ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਯੈਸ ਓਕੇ ਪਲੀਜ਼ life i wish to live with you life i wish to live with you like a plant with mud greenness with the leaf the landscape with eyes life i wish to be bonded with you life i wish to be bonded with you like the fish with the sea warmth with the sun fragrance with flowers life i wish to negotiate the ups and downs like a boat on the waves like a mountain herdsman herdsman going up and down the hills life every day i wish life every day i wish to become a cloud over burning desert or cause cause sea winds over cheeks shivering dry dying with cold life every day i wish to become a cloud over burning desert or cozy warning over cheeks shivering dying with cold life i wish to expand like one face of all the seven seas like sunshine of all the seven colors and one green tree life i wish to live with you like a plant with mud greenness with the leaf the landscape with eyes and uh, if you allow me i would like to recite in hindi one point okay tell me okay okay the kawa icha मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी कविताएं मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी कविताएं बरसाती नालों की भांति किसी नदी में गिरकर खो बैठे अपनी पहचान मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी कविताएं बरसाती नालों की भांति किसी नदी में गिर खो बैठे अपनी पहचान मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी कविताएं उस कावे धारा में शामिल हो मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी कविताएं उस कावे धारा में शामिल हो जिसके धर्म ग्रंथ एक विशाल खेत को बांटते हैं टुकड़ों में मखमली घास की हरियाली आरक्षित करते हैं चोटी टोपी के लिए वर्जित करते हैं तीसरा नेत्र खोलना मेरे जैसे लाखे रंग के लोगों के लिए मैं तो चाहता हूं मेरी कविताएं उन परिंदों के नाम हो मैं तो चाहता हूं कि मेरी कविताएं उन परिंदों के नाम हो जो गांव की बस्तियां मोहल्ले को पार कर चुगा चुगने के लिए उतर आते हैं इन उन आंगनों में घरों की ऊंची नीची छतों की परवाह किए बगैर बस मैं तो चाहता हूं कि मेरी कविताएं उस कावे धारा में शामिल हो जिसमें एक लव्या बंदा बहादुर की वीर गथाएं हैं बस मैं तो चाहता हूं कि मेरी कविताएं 
उस काव्य धारा में शामिल हो जिसमें एक लव्या मंदा बहादुर की वीर कथाएं हैं पीर बुद्धू शाह का जूचन है पावलो नरुदा की वेतन है मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी कविताएं बरसाती नालों की भांति किसी नदी में गिरकर खो बैठे अपनी पहचान थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू बलबीर जी यू प्रेजेंटेड सम ऑफ योर वेरी मैडम अजीत कौर जी यू आर यू वांट टू से समथिंग थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू ओके Okay, nice. so so now with your permission, I will invite Mr. Nimesh Nikhil from Nepal. Uh, Nimesh ji, please uh, present your poems. Up, ha, huh, yes. Thank you, sir. Very good evening and namaskar to everyone. Uh, I am Nimesh Nikhil from middle part of Nepal. Uh, I live in city named Hetonda. Uh, writing poetry, I have published three anthologies of my poem, and I am teaching uh, in a college under Tribhuvan University. Uh, today, I am going to present one poem. I have a very short poem, and I am going to present this poem first in English, uh, in Nepali, and same poem in Hindi also, in three languages, same poem. Uh, it is a very short poem. Uh, the title of my poem is Revolution. Revolution. They have all assembled today. They have all assembled today after their continuous failed attempts at securing mere grace marks to pass life's series of top exams. I'm quite shocked to see their empty stomachs being filled with explosives and their rough closed hands closing into tight fits. Uh, this was my, my poem in English. I'm going to recite same poem in Nepali. Kavita uh, Kushir Sakranti. जीवन का कठिन परीक्षा हरुमा, जीवन का कठिन परीक्षा हरुमा कृपाण का समेत न पायर अनुतीर्ण भय पची सने, आज एक ही ठाउं भेला भय कासन उन्हीं हरु, मलाई दौर्स हो, मत तीन का भोका पेट हरुमा बारूद भरिंदे गरे को र ठेला उठे का हथकेला हरुले मुट्ठी को आकार लिंदे गरे को देखी रहे चु। uh, finally, I want to uh, recite this poem in Hindi language, same poem. Kavita ka sirsak hai kranti, kranti. Jiban ke kathin imti hanu me, jiban ke kathin imti hanu me, kripaank tak na pakar anutirna hone par har bar, aaj ek jaga jama huye hai huye, mujhe dar hai, मैं उनके भूखे पेट में बारूद को भरते हुए और ठेले पड़ी सख्त हथेलियों को मुट्ठी का आकार लेते हुए दिख रहा हूँ। Thank you very much। निमेशी, if you want, you can present one more poem. We have time। uh, Thank you, sir. I am not prepared. I have just one okay. more poem. Okay, okay, no problem. So now, uh, thank you very much. And now I invite uh, uh, Miss Sujana Raman. Perugu from India. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Very good evening, everyone. My heartiest pronouns to Ma Ajitji and Foswell team and Sahitya Academy team for giving me this great opportunity. My greetings to all co poets. I am Perugu Sujana Ramu from Andhra Pradesh. I'm a language teacher in AP Government Schools. I have three publications, three books, and my publisher in many global anthologies. As a language teacher, first I will introduce my mother language, Telugu poem, two standards, and then go to its English translation. I thank translation to Dr. Saraja Devi K. 
a professor in english and poet poem title dhavala vastra dharullara ipati yuddha veerulu meere sarihaddula dharulanni meeve mee stethoscope neeti viswa anjanam krimi sokindo ledo telipe naadi prabanjanam మేము నమ్ముకున్న శస్త్రాలన్నీ విశ్రమిస్తున్నాయి నాటి చెరక సంహిత నేటి వైద్య శాస్త్రాలే మాకు సన్నిహిత నేస్తారు దిస్ పోయిన్ ఈస్ కరోనా వారియర్స్ వాకింగ్ గాడ్స్ యు ఆర్ ద వారియర్స్ నౌ ఆల్ ది రూట్స్ ఆఫ్ బౌండరీస్ ఆర్ యువర్స్ Your telescope is today's telescope, which diagnoses the contamination of the virus from the ancient Charika Samhita and to the current medical volumes are the bosom friends due to my our philanthropists. We are the has-been vegan virus, the invisible for all the students at the doorsteps of life. all are imprisoned in the self quarantines you only the outside for the safe guarding the community for the eradication eradication of the virus for the health of the mankind you made self sacrifice focus on the people determined for the welfare having faith in you we are in hand washing hands making your support bowing the our hands in the templars in the isolation wars you are the walking gods in the occasion of treating us you are the losing yourself and our tricolor flag is the i witness for this in quite research and refinement you only the capable of inventions and innovations you only can the this virus which is the terribly dancing on the global platform you only can the victory in this fight congratulations for you and my other for me and my students title name mother than a teacher whatever it may be school is a golden word whatever it may be school is a golden word as soon as i arrived the premises after four days all clothes me like the crowd of butterflies like rain and sun come together daughters and grips my mingle together i might have transformed into them or they might have transformed into me i might have transformed into them or my or they might have transformed into me we touched each then affectionately greeted cordially on the canvas of their sight on the canvas of their sight you are wanted you are out outer to come you are wanted you are outer to come is the clear and visible slogan but my lamentation can't make it true the unfortunate promotion like a jerk throw me out into other school i am i am more of mother than a teacher where even i am like iron dust around a magnet children are always around me the princess changed you are in my fond memories new children are like flocks of white flamingo birds thank you sir thank you for all friends you are very brilliant uh jyoti ji thank please, you uh, jyoti ji please, please unmute jyoti ji please unmute yourself uh, thank you sujana ji i am sorry thank you sujana ji for your nice presentation Uh, i am seeing that uh, miss ranjana nirola from nepal in the list uh, ranjana ji can you hear me no 
I think uh, there is some internet problem. Uh, now I will request uh, uh, chair of the session, Mr. Keshab Sigdel from Nepal to say a few words. And uh, if possible, uh, some of your poems also, sir. Thank you, um, Dr. Devendra Kumar Devesji, uh, for kindly inviting me to say a few words. Sir, uh, I am Jyoti Krishnamarma. Sorry, I am Jyoti oh, Krishnamarma. Sorry. sorry. No problem. Uh, Jyoti Krish. Oh, so the name on the, the tag name on the screen was different. Okay. Uh, thank you for correcting me. Uh, thank you, Jyoti ji. Um, President of Foswal uh, and our dearest mother. Ajit Kaurzi, um, our friends from Sahitya Academy and um, and Foswal, uh, my poets friends uh, from three different countries, Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. Uh, they include... Uh, hello. 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 Is it Ranjana ji? Hello, yeah. Ranjana ji. Ranjana yes, ji. Yes. Uh, yes, Ranjana ji. We can hear your you. Video is, uh, your video is your video is not not open. Can you can you open it? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, if you. Uh, ji? Yes, uh, ji. Ranjana ji. I think Keshav we should allow Ranjana ji to read our poem. Ah, yes. yeah, yeah. That is what I was asking. Ranjana ji, please uh, uh, make your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. My greetings to everyone present here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ajitma, and your team for giving me this opportunity. Uh, right now, I am with respected poets from different countries. I am so happy once again. Warm greetings to all. Ma apko sasat naman. Ajitma apko sasat naman. अभी मुझे लग रहा है कि मैं दिल्ली में ही हूँ और शहर में ही हूँ फ्रेंड्स के साथ हूँ आई एम फ्रॉम काठमांडू नेपाल आई हैव पब्लिश टू पोएट्री बुक्स आई एम नाउ आई एम टीचिंग इन कॉलेज आई एम गोइंग टू रिसाइट माय पोएम माय पोएम्स नेम इज माय बिलव अर्थ थैंक यू वन सेकेंड Today, spending elements in the world map, human civilization is wavering, the earth is getting concerned, death is dancing. Life is standing in the middle of the polluted present to be competitive with death. Hostage to knowledge in the spread winds of science, time is turning upside down and is advocating for human life. Time. Detractive is format. The present is intended to save it, its ex existence, nothing more than life. Over the immodesty of death, carrying of the sick volcano, liberatorian time, splurging the sick mud on the face of development age and making the earth sick. Helpless time is trying to make security and options to now from the window of the prison house of patient time i wish the sick earth a speedy recovery i wish the sick earth a speedy recovery thank you thank you ranjana ji now i request keshav ji to please continue sir yes yes thank you thank you uh, thank you ranjana ji for joining us so otherwise we would have missed you uh, it's good to see you back on the screen uh, once again uh, thank you all the poets for uh, participating in uh, this very brilliant very historic very important uh, legacy of the Asia, i mean south asian region uh, which our dearest mother uh, ajit kaurji has been leading since many decades we are very proud of her we are also proud of um, Saite Academy, who has collaborated with Foswal for this very wonderful international event. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all my poet friends uh, who presented brilliant uh, pieces of poetry. Uh, I, I was really very impressed with the meditating pieces by Minu Minocha, uh, very brilliant poetry she read today. 
uh, and I was equally impressed by a very brilliant, very senior poet, Balveer Madhopuri. Uh, I, I really loved his recitation in, in his own language, Punjabi. Um, uh, I had my friends from Nepal, Savita Gautam, uh, a very brilliant poet from Nepal. Uh, Safinu Safin, uh, whom I know uh, personally from Bangladesh. He's also a very brilliant poet. Nimes Nikhil is one of the best contemporary poets from Nepal. Uh, it, it is good to see that he read his uh, poem in Nepali, English, and also Hindi. Uh, I think uh, that was a very wonderful, uh, very innovative idea. Uh, and Madam Sujana Raman Peragu, uh, she read her beautiful pieces. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Peragu. Uh, Ranjana ji, uh, who could join us towards the end of the session. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, and I, I'm honored to chair this session. Actually, I mean, this is like a family. And, and I think when the whole world is uh, like threatened due to the pandemic, and I believe this creative imaginations of the poets and artists give us a reason to live, they revitalize us. I'm proud to be part of this very long um, literary tradition, uh, which um, um, our mother Ajit Kaur has been like leading in collaboration with prestigious organizations like Saita Academy. I think um, in the future, I hope that uh, we can meet uh, for this festival uh, in, in our physical presences next year. I hope uh, this uh, Corona pandemic will come under control uh, by the next year. Hopefully we'll be meeting in our physical presence. So I thank every one of you uh, for your brilliant presentations. I thank first of all team. I thank Saita Academy's team for their wonderful effort in making this uh, year's um, event a great success. I think this tradition should be carried on. And, and, and this is the reason um, why I always like uh, love to um, uh, jo join and not to miss the sessions of um, this uh, international um, literature festival organized by FOSWAL in collaboration with Saita Academy. Um, in the recent few years, Saita Academy has been collaborating with FOSWAL I, and I think this is a uh, important e e thing that they have been doing. Uh, finally, with um, my sincere thanks to all of you, I would like to read uh, two short poems before I wrap up my uh, presentation. Uh, please allow me uh, a minute to like find my poem. Please, 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 sir. Just a minute. <laughs> I'll be okay, back. okay, no problem, sir. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my my first poem is uh, titled "An Evening." Uh, I wrote this poem in memory of the disappeared people during Nepal Civil War. Um, and the person of this poem is a female. Each day before the sun sets, blowing dust along their path, the cows return to their sets. The goat's kid that had parted from its flock comes hopping at the ad of the house and looks reassured. Somewhere around the nearby trees, the soft sound of the beetles grow into a strong melody. In its hide and seek movement through tiny clouds, the moon glitters. After keeping safe his slippers with the blue straps, Chandani's father sits with his legs crossed at the porch. He takes out a leaf-wrapped tobacco and with a loud voice asks for a coal to kindle it. This way, since many years, this old house has composed a melody of its own happiness, even at the time of paucity. Unexpectedly today, the cows did not come blowing dust along their path, nor did the goat skid arrive, hoping as usual, maybe rainfall is expected. 
an incessant croaking of the frogs resonates below the gova tree nearby our house. Chandani's father's slippers are found with their broken straps. Due to some unknown fear, I have started sweating. At the edge of a field, there is a cloth completely drenched. As the moon grows dull, covered by the clouds, I'm unable to discern whether that piece of cloth is a flag of victory or an indication of my widowhood. This is the first poem. The second poem is um, about uh, uh, a lake that is called Rara. Rara is the biggest and the deepest freshwater lake in the Himalayas of Nepal. So we call it Rara Lake, Rara Tal. So my title is With the Waves of Rara. I wrote this after visiting this lake with the waves of Rara. Deceiving the pine trees standing in sentry, the moon flirts with the lake. In response, the lake creates ripples of waves and splashes as if it were a rehearsal of an enticing dance of a winter night. The moon, as always, continues its own course in the Cali. Uh, in the caligenous night, the lake sees the moon's revived youthfulness. Its seductive appearance excites the lake and it liberates in the waves. In the light of the moon, the lake appears intriguing. My sickening heart becomes even more impassioned and to pacify the unquenched desires, my imagination dives into the lake. As the night exceeds, the breath of the hostlers evaporate and dissolve in the sky, and the horses moving from the alleys nearby wake up the lazy slips with their neck bales. Travelers with their backpacks spend a night in the tents at the bank of Rara and anxiously wait for the sun to come out in the morning. They pick up their cameras and click a photograph of the sun's reflection on the lake. I keep waiting for the moon to come back again with the birds and horses sleep, wearing the night somber, I prepare myself to continue the excitement of the lake, rippling towards the ace in the optional light of the moon. And now I read my final poem for the session. Uh, it's titled Embargo. My daughter is learning numbers. She is learning the names of the months and days. She wants to do things on her own, like her father, like her mother. And we keep saying, not now, dear, you are too small for it. Now she has a wish, a wish to grow and not to be a child anymore. Because she wants to do things on her own, like her father, like her mother. And on her third birthday, she tells me, Baba, when I will no more be a child. To her, this asking is important. It's about a sense of freedom, a sense of the self. Teenage would mark her first transition. For me, it is just counting of a few more years. I add a 10 more years to her present age. My daughter will be excitedly counting these more years. For they mean 10 more birthday cakes and 10 more birthday gifts before she finally arrives at it. Oh. This transition is scary. She will be 13, she will be assertive, she will try to live on her own, no more like her father, no more like her mother, different from what she aspired for. And now we fear the number. We fear the possible assertion of her breaking away from us. And with this fear, we declare the number an embargo, ominous and taboo. Thank you. So with this poem, I conclude uh, my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice poems and also for chairing this session. Uh, uh, I am happy to inform all of you that uh, Secretary Sahit Academy, Dr. K. Srinivas Raoji, is among us present in this concluding and very important session. I would request you, sir, to say a few words. Sir, unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, thank you, Jyoti. Uh, friends, uh, it has been a wonderful four days from 15th March. We listened to some wonderful poetry, discussions on various topics, 
and views on various aspects related to literature as it exists in our countries. And some of the points on uh, religious literature of these countries brought home very many new ideas and perspectives. First, I want to thank Madam Ajit Gorji for collaborating with Sahit Academy in organizing this online South Asian Literary Festival. From the inaugural session to the last session devoted to poetry reading, it was a very lively and vibrant literary festival, I should say. Uh, friends, uh, the technology has enabled all of us to come together and that would have been impossible without digital medium in these difficult times, which we have experienced in the last four days. I also would like to congratulate uh, FOSFAL for organizing SARP literary meets and festivals year after year without any interruptions. It is not easy to bring together scholars, writers, and poets from various countries every year and organize this type of meets. I take this opportunity to thank Professor Chandrasekhar Kambarji, who is the president of Sahit Academy, Sri Madhav Koshikji, vice president of Sahit Academy, and all the writers, poets, and scholars who participated in this four-day event. Uh, we all know that without the support of you writers, poets, and scholars, this event mm -hmm. would not have been possible. In successfully organizing such meets every year, Madam Majid Korji has brought together finest of minds from SARC countries and that has enriched literature in all the countries. Hope her service continues for the years to come. I thank all the audience who watched this event live in Academy YouTube channel. I also thank all my colleagues who have conducted the sessions so meticulously. Thank you and hope to meet you all later in the year in another edition of SARC event, which is going to be held very soon with the collaboration of FOSWAL and Sahit Academy. And now I think it is the time for all of us to listen to uh, none other than Madam Ajit Korji, who is the, uh, whose brainchild, I should say, this uh, kind of events every year she organizes. Um, Madam, I think uh, rather I should, uh, instead of I should say that address this August gathering, uh, you can bless all of us. Ajit Korji. Thank you. Should I speak? Yes, yes, madam. Dr. Rao, Dr. Rao, should I speak? Yeah, yeah yes, please, madam. Please, yes. please go ahead, please. I cannot comprehend how the last four days of South Asian Online Literary Conference flew away. Every minute was precious and loaded with beautiful, heart-touching poetry and profound fiction, scholarly papers, and interviews of writers by their fellow writers. This is uh, something new which we have added to our festival. Interviews by writers with their fellow writers. And we will expand it further next, next time in October. Thanks to all of you, my dear friends from across the South country and Thailand for being with us. My heartfelt, uh, my heartiest thanks to Sahit Academy and the Dynamic Intellectual Secretary Dr. K. Srinivas Rao for joining hands with us and for collaborating with us. Without Dr. Rao and the President Dr. Chandrasekhar Kambar's help, this online conference couldn't have been possible as they are greatly experienced in handling web conferences. We are not. We are totally illiterate about uh, uh, these technologies. That is the beauty of modern technology that sitting hundreds of and thousands of miles away, we could talk to each other. The only thing we missed was the, our usual warm hug. We used to hug each other and uh, pat on each other's back and kiss 
and feel uh, at the top of the world. Thank you all my friends from neighboring countries for taking out your precious time and joining us for this profoundly meaningful and creative 58th conference. I am full of gratitude for all of you. We will meet again, inshallah, in October this year. Hoping Science Academy will again hold our hand and organize the 59th South Asian Literature Conference. Thank you. Thank you very much.